welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video so a few videos back um, we had a truck with engine warning light and then it was lacking power had fuel problems and everything like that well we cleared it it's been back to the customer for and I road test it and it, it went back for it's got to be a couple of weeks now but it's come back on again so because I cleared it all before hopefully we'll get a better diagnostic on, on what it actually is so I'm gonna do an all system scan now and then we'll come back when we've um, we've got a bit of an idea of what it could be Right, so I'm not going to go through every single system. We're only interested in the engine one we've got. Um, so we've got injection rail pressure, high voltage, circuit one, reference five volt sensor too high, boost pressure, high, short circuit, control unit, cylinder four, cylinder six, low performance, engine protection, immobiliser fault, uh, oil pressure sensor, I'm just wondering whether it's got either a wiring fault or whether it's got oh, like a ECU fault with all these having so many different things like that. I'm just thinking whether it could be something like that. So let's look into this a little bit. It's defecting now, look. Wants the car and it's revving itself back up. That's the fault. Injection rail pressure. High voltage short circuit positive. Yeah, it's the only active fault we're getting up at the minute, but it's almost like driving it. Yeah, we have to look at this for a lot more for sure. Another thing that I want to look at is this. Because when I drive it down the yard and you put your foot down, it holds back. Holds back hard. So, engine variable geometry, actuator position, difficulty in moving. Engine variable geometry, turbo charge, actuator position, internal fault. So, let's have a look into that quickly. So, all I'm doing is re teaching the actuator its position and everything so let's just keep carrying on and I'll keep it recording for now so we've done all that it's had a new one on it before I think I'll wait for that Right, so let's see what happens. So before anyone says anything, I am on a yard site, so don't worry about it. But I've recalibrated the actuator and look, it pick, picks up miles, miles better. It felt like it was hanging back, like someone was restricting it. So I think tomorrow, let's just try it again. Yeah. See now, it absolutely flies. It pulls like an absolute train. So much better. So what I think I'm going to do tomorrow, we're going to pull the actuator off tomorrow, have a look at the actuator, because I'm pretty sure it's had a new one at some point, and we're going to check the arm inside and make sure that's not seized and holding it back. But yeah, we'll have to have a, investigate that tomorrow, but I'll carry on this video tomorrow. So it is the next day. Um, I thought it would be fuel-related. Um, it still could be, but I just feel 
driving it down the road, well, driving it around the yard, it felt like something like an exhaust brake or something was holding it, and it was holding it back. And as soon as I plugged, as soon as I got the gel test in and plugged it in and then sort of recalibrated the actuator, it seemed all right then. So I'm not sure. Um, I just feel like mechanically it's holding it back somehow. So for the sake of checking, we're going to get the cab over, we're going to take all the intake pipe off, uh, and then we're going to pull the actuator off and see if there's anything obvious as to why, whether it's seized on the turbo, won't move, when it moves free, I don't know. But let's get cracking, let's have a look, and uh, let's see what we can find. So, it doesn't look like it's had a new one, uh, but we have got a leak. Whether that's coming from that pipe or the actual actuator, could be the actual actuator. Get my words out there. Uh, but yeah, we're leaking coolant. So now I'm going to start stripping and trying to we'll get this actuator off now and um, have a look and check the arm and everything like that. But we're going to need an actuator either way by the looks of it. I'm just going to quickly check the, the back part because there's the, this pipe here that goes round here. They, they can sometimes leak the little seals, but it looks like that's on top. So we'll check it anyway and... Uh, We'll get back to you once we've got the um, actuator off. So just quickly for people who haven't done an actuator before, um, we need to disconnect that pipe off the back here. It goes round, you can see. Yeah, it goes round anyway, a 10 mil, a little 10 mil bolt, take the pipe off, get this out of the way. Take this plug off here, which I've just undone. I'll move that out of the way. So we're gonna get that out of the way. And then one, two, and then there's two at the back. It's the same size. There, hex key bolts. Can't remember them. Maybe six mil. Get that out and then pull it all off. Just be careful. It will be coolant everywhere. Uh, that's why I'm draining it now. Um, and then I will show the programming process just in case anyone hasn't done it. But it's pretty, it's pretty simple. So I'm going to time lapse this and then let's get this actuator off. It moves nice and free. And there. So we're going to fit a new VTG. We're going to clean all this up um, and fit a new one and program it and see how we get on from there. See whether it's that was the actual fault for it. But it, it wants replaced in either way. Um, we've just got to do a bit at a time. We'll, we'll fit an actuator. We'll run it and then see what happens. See whether we still get a few, any fuel faults or anything like that for a start. So, a couple of days later, we got the bits. Uh, well, we have new actuator. So, that's that. And we also have our kit, which includes seals, cable ties. Most important bits we need are the bolts. So the pins are along the oh, cog in there. So let's get it all lined up and then we'll go through the calibration side again. So we're just all we're doing, just a bit of um, emery paper. Just cleaned it all up. You don't have to go mad. Just make sure it's all clean. As you know on this channel, we like to clean things up. Right, what we're gonna do is the cog has a line here, see there and there. We're gonna line it up with the right one, like so. And then we get our pin, which is here. 
bust it down the hole and that'll keep that lined up then so now we need to plug gel test in and then we'll do the program inside so all we're going to do is go into calibration turbo actuator i've already put my expo code in click the tick this object is aligned the actuator properly to calibrate it later so So, engine stopped, shut off, and parking brake applied, which we've all done. So now it's calibrating the position. Yeah, look. I'm just going to stop doing that. So, let me move a little bit there. It calibrated the actuator, the actuator here, the arm, so where we put that pin is where it's lined. So, just, I'm just bolting it down. Um, the one thing I will say, the back bolts where that plug is at the back, I'd use a 3.8 long extension or the wobbly end or a flexi sort of uh, UJ. So that bit's done now. All we're going to do is tick it. So carefully install the actuator, which we've done. Uh, remember to take that pin out, you won't get it on anyway. So all our conditions are met. And you'll hear it moving. So, I'll put normal operation. Turn the ignition off and wait 15 seconds. So, we've done that. That's going off because there's no call in it. It's as simple as that. So, I'm going to go into diagnostic now. <laughs> Any time today. You beat yourself because I've disconnected. Injection rail pressure, high voltage short circuit. We've got a lot of faults here as well. Um, So, where is it? Engine valve which is trying to position difficulty moving. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to clear all these faults, and then we'll take that ride and see what happens. So, top to the corner. I'm not filming that again because we're filming that quite a lot. So, we're going to get it running. See if the engine light goes off. Jazz. Running okay. So I'm going to let that run up. Get that coolant flushing through. And then we'll give it a road test. So I'm going to go out and road test now. Um, see how we get on with this. If I break down, you'll be the first to know. So let's give this a run and uh, let's see how we get on. Also, quick reset the trip to zero. So let's get some miles in and see how we get on. So we put 33 on it. Um, drove fine, pulled really fine. You know, pretty happy with it. It ain't faulted. Literally when I had it last time, it didn't fault at all. Well, sorry, when I had it before, it wouldn't rev and it wouldn't do anything. And then it was coming up with loads and loads of faults. So I'm just going to plug it in. We're going to do a quick scan again. Um, as long as all are okay, should be able to get it back to the customer and let them crack on with it. So. Yeah, it drives really nice, but let's plug it in first and then um, let's see what it says. So, no faults whatsoever. I would take that as a success. So, originally we had fuel pressure problems. We had, um, what else do we have? Oil pressure, switches, loads of different things like that. And it looks like the VTG actuator has actually sorted the problem. When it, the only reason I thought about the actuator in the beginning, obviously we had the fault on there anyway. But when I drove it around the yard, it was holding back like an exhaust brake was on. And it just wouldn't do anything. So, just goes to prove sometimes you need to look into little things a little bit more. Especially when you've got loads of faults like it had, to think it's something more. Uh, but at the minute, I've drove it, it pulls really well, drives really nice. There's no problems with it. There's no faults come back up that I'm worried about. Um, so, yeah, I would say that's fixed. So... 
that's a bit of a carry on from the last video, but I think, yeah, I'm very happy with it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Obviously we did this truck. We looked at it a few weeks ago and it had the, the fuel pressure problem and everything like that. It came back in, it ran like rubbish, wouldn't do anything. Wouldn't, I couldn't get it above 10 mile an hour. Um, and then we had fuel pressure, sensor fault, short circuit. We had loads of different faults in it. And yet that VTG actuator seems to have sorted them problems. Like it don't go from running like the way it did to then just being fine like that. So like I say, it's lucky that when I drove it, it pulled it back and it, and it, it felt like and it was an exhaust brake holding on. That's what it felt like. It's the only way I can describe it. But I'm, I'm assuming that the actuator inside is seized or something like that. It's not doing anything, not moving and just holding pressure. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy that's all sorted. That's another one back on the road. Um, next video, we've got lo I've got loads of content coming up literally at the minute now. Like, it's literally, the, I've got defect stuff to do. I've got vans to do. I've got a project car that I'm doing plenty on that. Um, so, yeah, loads of content coming up. If you haven't already and you can think about subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. If you could like, comment, even share this video, that would be great. So, enjoy the rest of your weeks. Keep safe and I'll see you all in the next video.